Hello, everybody. Um, this is a recording of part one of the technical training in bird sound recording using a standard phone and ad an adapted parabola. Part two, three and four will follow subsequently. Uh, we are, I am part of a small group called Planet Birdsong Foundation and my uh, colleagues are Peter Cowdery, who is a recordist, composer and musician, and Isaac Herman, who is a bioacoustician, uh, an educational technologist and a game designer. And we bring together our joint talents to uh, bring to Rwanda uh, bird sound recording using equipment, which is uh, accessible and available for all for citizen science. I, my background is in town and country planning, urban, urban development. Uh, my particular interest was in development management with a very strong interest in bringing environmental protection into uh, planning work and into sustainable development. Now, in this part, we cover the purposes of recording, uh, choosing a subject, uh, very useful eBird Macaulay guidance links on the technical aspects on how to do this. And then we'll have a look at using the phone and a parabolic uh, dish as, as a sound recorder and microphone. Uh, I did cover the purposes of recording at some length in the introduction, which went out uh, through the Centre of Excellence um, seminar series um, on the 20th of October. And this is available on uh, the Center of Excellence uh, COE Rwanda Twitter feed. And also it has been issued on the uh, Google group uh, Planet Birdsong training participants. So it's accessible in both ways. And this recording will be the same. So very central to our work is scientific data collection. And this is why we formed a very uh, strong collaboration with the Center of Excellence in Biodiversity at the University of Rwanda. We have found that the uh, data of recorded birdsong in Rwanda is very limited. Many of the species uh, on the Rwanda list have been recorded, but have been recorded elsewhere, uh, for example, in Tanzania and Kenya. And over the range of that um, particular species, uh, possibly 2000 kilometers, uh, these birds vary in the sounds they make. So it is our objective to um, build up a data set, an accurate data set of the, the Rwanda species list actually recorded in Rwanda. I'm just moving my face up a bit so you can see the text. So um, this is vital because the, you can't do scientific investigation of an, an area unless you have accurate data relating to that area. So these recordings of um, the birds within Rwanda and within areas of Rwanda are uh, a first starting point and provide the base data on which science uh, can proceed. So this science can be used for uh, identifying taxonomic variation and endemism um, over the area of Rwanda and particularly uh, in the uh, Congolese Montane rainforest. It, it can also be used to test uh, bird biodiversity. Uh, birds occupy a high position in the uh, ecosystem in that they uh, occupy a, a whole variety of habitat niches. Uh, and they take food from plant, seed, insect, invertebrate, aquatic, reptilian and avian sources. They need a roosting place, a nesting place and food and water. So you can see from that, uh, the if you look at the range of bird species, their requirements cover a wide range of biodiversity. 
And so the presence or absence of birds, particularly specialist birds with specialist needs, and indeed the abundance of common species, just how many are there or not there, um, are a very good indicator of the natural health and richness of an area. And indeed, if those birds are absent or absent or very low in numbers, uh, it's a very good indication of the degradation of an area through natural or man-made processes. So bird life is a very good measure of what is going on in an area. Have a look at the introduction uh, recording to see that in some more detail. Uh, another purpose of recording is community familiarization. We're very keen on citizen science because what this does is introduce a lot more people to appreciating what is around them and the um, nature that's around them and how that nature is an integral part of our way of life and how communities interact with their surroundings. Um, and by understanding that and appreciating that, communities um, feel included in scientific research and activity and are far more likely to respond to proposed changes to a, a, a secure sustainable development, whether that's changes to small farm practices or changes in farm activity, uh, uh, or it's uh, involving um, the use of the forests, uh, the swamps, and other important biodiversity areas. So by appreciating nature and understanding nature, communities are much more inclined towards acting to improve their lot, their position, uh, by engaging uh, with natural science and the data that informs change. A particular aspect of this is bird guide training. I've done quite a lot of bird guide training in Rwanda on the visual side, bird watching. Uh, this is to improve uh, the skills and the uh, capacities of uh, the bird guides. But now this is about sound and how important learning sound is to the arsenal, the toolkit of the bird guides. It's a at least half their skill set in terms of finding and identifying birds for visiting birders, but also by lodging the bird data, accurate local bird sounds on um, international bird data, set, uh, data sets such as eBird, which is what we plan to do. Uh, that information is available to visiting birders in advance so that they can appreciate in advance uh, what a, a rich and interesting country Rwanda is um, and uh, can bring this data with them uh, and apply it uh, to their own activities uh, in the country. Uh, a further purpose is uh, populating educational tools. Uh, we have already developed a fun game app, which is intended to teach identification uh, using sound and pictures and it can be pitched uh, at a beginner level school level or it can indeed have um, editions which are much more advanced so uh, it can be pitched in uh, uh, in a number of ways but it does depend on having that original base data taken locally uh, to populate it in the first place so that is one of our objectives so by using these educational tools in schools, through the Green Schools Programme, through um, non-government organisations and uh, various nature centres, more people are exposed to the, the qualities of nature, um, can engage with it, appreciate it and ultimately cherish it and bring it into their everyday lives and improve their well-being. And an aspect of this is actually our last purpose on, on a very important purpose, uh, and that's to create natural sound based music. One of our number, Peter, is a is a, a professional musician and he is already using bird sound to make music uh, and introduce it into the education system, uh, both for uh, uh, technical development and for pleasure 
and it also can go into sound libraries and can be used in uh, producing uh, sound effects and uh, background sounds uh, for films and that kind of thing. So we'll move on to choosing a subject. The, um, this is really important because it, you'll all be familiar with going into, out into an area and there's actually a lot of bird sounds. So what do you choose? How do you pick what to record? And most birds have a song or a typical call uh, to defend their territory or to attract a mate. And, um, but they also have a lot of other sub songs and different calls and these can be in their courtship i'm just trying to get my face out of the way again um uh, for contacting their young or a mate near the nest um for alarm calls nearly all birds have an alarm call and they can have different alarm calls for different dangers and a flock will have contact calls uh, to keep together as they move through the environment some birds, in, in, uh, particularly the, uh, for example, the corvids, the crow family, almost have a language and we've yet to discover what they're really saying. So uh, when choosing a subject, the objective is to record as many examples as possible. Uh, you can record the same species over and over again to discover what sounds they make, really listen back carefully to the sub sounds and record as many different species as possible. Um, so make a start by practicing on any clear bird sound, song or call. Um, good recordings of common birds uh, across districts and sub areas are important because that's how we spot difference uh, over areas. And we can also use that ultimately to examine um, presence or absence and abundance. That's a, the really important use of data. When you're recording, listen for other bird songs and calls uh, in the surroundings, because this is important metadata, additional data, which describes the area and describes the context of your target bird. And you may also then decide, ah, right, I'll make this recording of bird A, and then I'll go on and record that bird I can hear off to the left and make a second recording. So lots of scope to build up files of good recordings by using your ears. Always listen for unusual sounds and calls, uh, songs and calls, because as you go on, you get used to the common birds and their sounds, uh, and you will be alerted to something which is different. Now that could be because a bird is new in an area. It might be in an area where it was not known, or it might be a rare bird which only occurs occasionally. We need to try and get those recorded. So it's almost a case of drop everything and record the unusual as best you can, even if the recording is not of the highest quality. A recording is better than no recording. So the more recordings, the better, and the more submitted to the data sets uh, uh, help us to identify this variation across range and utilize this mass data for science. The, um, a bit more on choosing a subject. These are the practical considerations. General background noise, such as human voices or the general sound in settlements, um, background bird sounds or animals, these uh, you're not trying to remove these. You're not trying to record a, a pure sound of a single bird without any other um, sounds going on. All these other sounds provide context um, and are actually important part of the recording. And when we come to labeling in the next session, you'll see how that is actually recorded in the labeling for the file. Um, it is necessary though to avoid really noisy areas so move away from the noisiest areas if if it's raining hard heavy rain is noisy so not much point recording in heavy rain stand a well away from fast flowing water because that will drown out your sounds wind is a difficulty avoid windy places heavy traffic now a single car going past can be dealt with at the processing stage but if you have heavy traffic 
in the background and it's continuous, uh, you can record against that, but uh, turn your back to it and try and get as far away from it as possible. Another one is close noise from children. They might be running around curious about what you're doing. Um, similarly, uh, companions, everybody needs to be quiet. So move away from children and ask companions to be quiet. And then you can work up to specific targets, family groups, rarer birds. All birds are suitable targets. Calls are really valuable and multiple recordings are valuable too. So whilst you're uh, um, building up your skills and competences, I would refer you very much to eBird and the Macaulay Library and their resources in how to record. Uh, these are all posted in this uh, uh, show and the idea is that you uh, look at all these links and they can explain much better than I can the detail of how to go about recording. And this is the main resource link, but you will also see that um, there are a number of links within that main resource. Um, it's a, a wonderfully rich uh, and useful set of information. Uh, the first one in, embedded in that link are three videos by Greg Budney, who is the creator of the Macaulay Library. The first is on recording basics, the second on parabolic reflector systems, and the third on microphones, but we're focusing on using the phone as your microphone. There's some, uh, also some uh, more really important links there. I would urge you to work through them all as part of building up your skills. Now, your phone uh, is being used as a microphone, so built into the phone uh, must be a recording app. Some phones will already uh, have Microsoft Voice Recorder, for example, built in. Uh, but eBird recommends this particular one, uh, and I've been using it, RecForge 2 um, Lite is a free version, few adverts, but if you don't like the adverts, they are a bit annoying, um, subscribe for it. It's only about $5 for the pro version. I would recommend it. The value of this one is that it produces WAV files. These are WAV files, and these are these record the complete data, uh, the complete sound. They are not compressed. If you use MP3 or MP4, these are compressed files. So WAV avoids that. So you don't lose any of the detail of the sound, which actually is important. You do that for scientific purposes. Uh, you record at a, a high level of uh, hertz. That's, I can compare that with the, a digital photograph. There are um, uh, there are there's more detail in a, a high uh, recording level rather than a low recording uh, level uh, in sound. A phone will produce mono. That's fine. Uh, you can use the preview. That's setting the the um, amplitude off or on, we'll come to that in a minute. And uh, there are other settings which you will need to set up as you set up RecForge in your phone. And the, the link there uh, from the Macaulay Library is particularly good uh, to, to help you set up your phone for recording. You need to know your phone. You, you need to test the microphone, uh, which is recording input, i.e. the sound that's coming uh, from a bird, uh, you do that by setting off a recording and tapping the different small holes at the top and bottom of the phone, sometimes on the side. And by doing that, you'll discover which one is actually making the recording. This is really important because it's very easy to go wrong on this point. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, small additional microphones added to the phone on the plugged into the uh, socket. They don't really add very much at all, but if you use a larger microphone, that's okay, uh, but certainly not essential. And for starting off, I would recommend you simply use the phone microphone and RecForge 2 as your recording app. Uh, phone microphones are actually very good these days, so um, I would recommend not worrying about microphones at this, uh, additional microphones at this stage. If you should use one though, you, in order to make it work with a phone, you need um, TRRS, that's tip ring ring sleeve jacks. I'm just going to hold one up uh, to the 
uh, there you are, you can see that uh, to the, the camera there. Uh, you can see it has three rings on it and that uh, the tip ring ring sleeve uh, refers to the, the, the brass bits, not the black rings. And that is the one that most phones need. If you find one with uh, only two rings, it's not likely to work. Ensure your phone is 100% charged. And um, the, the reason for that is that this system doesn't need to use data. You don't need to be connected in order to record, but it does use power. So uh, sometimes if you're out for a whole day, uh, a power pack might be helpful. But the first thing to do is make sure your phone's 100% charged when you go out. So uh, RecForge 2 looks like this when you open it up. The um, home page looks like the diagram on the left. And I've done a, an extract and enlargement there. Uh, you can see uh, uh, the files as they're built up. And if I just point at them, you can see uh, the first two numbers refer to the date and the time. These are really useful as uh, unique identifiers for each file. And then you add in uh, afterwards uh, additional what we call metadata, which describes the sound you've recorded. And then you can see it shows you that it's a WAV file, important. These were recorded at 48 hertz and in mono, and there you see the length of the recording. We'll come back to that one in, in a minute. And it very usefully it builds up a list of the different recordings you've made, and it invites you to delete them. And I would recommend if you're not happy with a recording, you keep deleting and just keep those that you want to take on to process and potentially submit the data and discard the rest, because these files are large, as you can see. Um, and you don't want them hanging about if you're not happy with them. Uh, the big red button is the record button. And the other thing before you start, uh, it, you need to go to settings, which is in the menu, these three bars here. This is it. And these two, I'll just go back because I've jumped the gun slightly there. There we are, sorry about that. Um, these two uh, screens here on the right show you the settings and the um, link I showed you before describes how to set up your phone uh, to best effect. And I would refer you to that in order to uh, apply the settings. Uh, the general principle is that you're trying to record the sound in as original form as possible. So things like effects you don't want. You want to keep it as original as possible. So that's uh, the phone screen when you're recording. Uh, this is called the waveform. This is what it looks like as you record. And this is the wave front. And this moves across the phone as you go. Uh, this um, is the bar, which shows you the amplitude, the, uh, which relates to volume, this needs to be set around about 8 to 12 decibels. In Breckford, rather oddly, it's expressed as a positive number because decibels are normally a minus number, but don't worry about that, it, it works fine. You're aiming at around about 12 decibels, and that sets the uh, sound volume, which you can see here, these more pointy bits are the louder sounds. Um, roughly in the center of the grid. If they start to shoot right up to the top and the bottom, then it's too loud and you will get distortion in your recording. You don't want distortion. So bring that decibel level down to somewhere below 12. And that's actually reflected in this uh, bar, bar here, which shoots up and down as you record. Uh, don't worry about the little green one. That's to do with the way the phone is recording. Down here, we have the time. You're aiming at around about 40 to 60 seconds. You can always stop it, um, save it and start again if you want to split it, if you've got a particularly good sound and it's quite long. But ultimately, you want to submit 30 second clips after they've been processed. So you want something a bit bigger in order to find the best parts of it to submit. So. Uh, Intriguingly, this, this shot up before, what is this? Well, this is about parabolas. Um, there's some famous parabolas already in Rwanda. Um, uh, the Mwami Palace at Nanza is one. 
Kigali Convention Center is another. These are structural parabolas and uh, the, the shape is important because the uh, in, in architectural structural terms, the forces expressed down gravitational forces from this shape are very strong because the same force is expressed downward from all parts of the structure on this particular shape. So it doesn't spread, it doesn't collapse. So really useful historically in, in, in building. But the same principle applies uh, in terms of sound waves hitting a parabola. So here we have our uh, adapted uh, parabolic reflector. This is a this comes as a flat pack and it's very accessible. It's not too expensive. And we're hoping to bring some of these to Rwanda. Uh, I've just turned it on its face and you'll see the shape. It's not a semicircle. It is a, a ovoid type shape, but it's a very particular shape in, uh, um, in science. There it is held up in its uh, position for recording. And the key thing, the adaptation, which is so important is the plate on which you mount a phone in order to record. So how does that happen? Well, this explains the forces uh, a little bit, uh, a bit more mathematically. Um, this shows you sound waves coming in from your target bird. You can see me moving the cursor across these uh, blue uh, arrowed lines. And wherever they hit the parabola shape coming round, wherever they hit it, they bounce off at the same angle and they are all bounced to a, a single point here, this point here, and that is called the focal point. So that is where um, the strength comes from in architectural terms, but it also is the point at which in sound terms, sound wave terms, we can concentrate the sound coming into the parabola directly next to the phone microphone which you all you already know where that is because you've done some work on that and your phone sits here in the center of the para uh, parabolic dish and uh, this allows the microphone to collect more sound than it could do on its own and if we take this red line and this section of the parabola uh, this translates across to here say uh, line three you see the red line here and what that shows you is that whether you have a big dish or a small dish, it's always the same shape, a parabola. So if you've got a big wide parabolic re uh, reflector, it's actually a small section of the same shape, which is how it becomes shallow. because It's a small section, that section, but it's essentially the same shape. So if you have a deep one of the sort we're using, and ours is approximately like this one, the um, focal point is really down at the bottom of the shape at the back uh, at F1. Um, but uh, the more shallow and large the uh, parabola, uh, the focal point moves out. So uh, this might be used for different types of microphone, shotgun microphones, for example. Um, and, but we're talking about using this with a phone. So we want to set the phone inside the parabolic, parabolic dish. So we need the focal point down in the base so that it can collect the reflected sound coming into the parabola, as you can see here, uh, down to that focal point. So when you set up the phone, um, it looks like this. So that's a phone recording at the moment. It's fastened on with lots of elastic to stop it dropping off, keep it in position. And the microphone, which is just underneath that elastic uh, there, is set exactly at the focal point of this parabola. And that's actually marked on the parabola so you know where it is. And this just demonstrated, it demonstrates it in use. So you've got a sound wave coming in. Imagine that going into the inside of the parabola bouncing off the inside face and it bounces down to the center point and that sound is then picked up by the mic uh, the phone uh, microphone and increases the effectiveness of that microphone so that is why these are particularly helpful in improving the recording capacity of a phone uh, we um, I can offer you an, another link, which is uh, has been provided uh, uh, by Macaulay, uh, all about birds. And this is um, 
uh, this contains more information about using uh, para parabolic dishes with the smartphone. Uh, so I'd urge you to have a look at that one. Uh, but I do at this point want to just introduce our, di our uh, parabolic adapted parabola. Uh, it's called Parachirp and it's been developed by Mark Adams, who is in, in the UK. Uh, he's of time and space learning. And uh, he's developed this uh, to bring this uh, capacity, this uh, uh, ability to record more effectively to citizen science and to education. And we've been working with him to perfect this parabolic dish, uh, adapted dish, uh, over the last 18 months. And I think we've uh, now come up with the, the best design uh, possible, although we keep working on it. Uh, you'll see there a set of headphones. Um, the uh, I'll just speak about headphones in a minute. They aren't essential, but we'll come to those in just a minute. But uh, initially, you won't have these dishes. I'm afraid we, we can only bring them over next year uh, when I come over in June. And I'm hoping to do some practical training with recording uh, at that time. But um, in the meantime, get started on this. Build up skills simply using your phone uh, because that phone is very effective. Uh, on using headphones, uh, just uh, that point there, um, headphones can allow you to really acutely focus on the subject. And that's why the professionals use them. Uh, they don't use them for scanning around and choosing a subject because actually you want to listen to everything. Um, but the problem is you can't use headphones with a phone because on a phone, the uh, output and the input don't work at the same time. You either have to have recording going on or listening going on. You can't have both. So it, they may be useful uh, for listening back to your recordings, and they certainly will be useful if you move on to dedicated uh, uh, record a dedicated re sound recorder at a later stage. Uh, I certainly recommend you use a, a headset. It can be a simple headset or, or proper cup headphones. Uh, when you listen back to your recordings because you'll hear them more clearly uh, but that's the main use of them at this stage a uh, simple headset the sort that you uh, use for listening to music is is very effective for this but when you do use headphones uh, the recorders tend to have one placed on an ear and the other set back somewhere behind their head and that's actually so they can do both things they can scan with one ear and listen to their uh, focus uh, with the other ear. That's why you see them offset like that, and then they all seem to do that. But at the beginning, the key thing is that you use your ears. You have a really effective um, stereo system uh, to hear sound and focus in on your target. The parabolic dish uh, is most efficient and effective if it's, if it's pointing very directly at the target. And sometimes you can't see the bird you're trying to record, very often you can't see it. So using your ears to direction find is really important. And you can do that uh, particularly by pulling your ears forward a little bit. You'll find that by doing that, your stereo and your capacity to hear sound in, improves considerably. Now you've got one hand on your phone and, and, and so on. So use the other ear, bring it forward like that. And you'll find that's a very effective system without anything other than your phone and uh, a sound recording app built in. So while you're doing all that, you can be listening around for other sounds and, and working out whether you've got another target bird to go on to afterwards and the metadata, which helps describe your target when it comes to labeling and we cover labeling, labeling in the next session. So I invite you to get out into the, your surroundings into different habitats and areas, um, have, uh, areas of habitat and villages and settlements in the town, in, in rural areas, in particular habitats like forests and um, the swamps, and just try this out. Really have a go at recording, building up your skills, building up your capacity to manage your phone and the files to best effect. And then next time we'll talk about the labelling and how to process those sounds. So Murko Sichane and very best of luck. Uh, we will be um, 
obviously this is a recording. I invite you, if you have questions or seeking answers, to use our WhatsApp group, Planet Bird Song um, Training. Uh, that's being used quite a lot now, and I invite you to use that. We, we will respond. Otherwise, you can email. And I invite you to join our Google group uh, on which we can uh, share links and re these recordings and uh, generally provide you with information. To do that, I need your email address to join you to the WhatsApp group. Obviously, I need your phone number and your name. Many of you have submitted this information, but if you want to join this, I need that from you. And uh, that uh, uh, that goes to my email address, which you'll see at the beginning of this um, recording. Uh, I wonder if I can get back to it quickly. Uh, probably not quite so quickly as I need to, but uh, the email address uh, is at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, so thank you. Uh